I will begin today with um, a very brief story for some of you. The story is will be boring because it's like the same old story every day. You are always telling us that story. You know, Jesus told a lot of stories. Talked about his own life in stories. Talked about the kingdom in stories. So, we have been praying and waiting on the Lord. And I wanted to come this evening and just take off. Talking about the power of God, the might of God, and all of that. But the Holy Spirit arrested me. So I said, Lord, what does this mean? On a very serious day, the beginning of these days of encounter. And you arrest me. You don't allow, you don't, don't allow me to prepare a message. So what am I going to do? I've been up for some time. So he told me, go and rest. Just take some time and cool off your head. So I lay down, listening to music. And trying to rest in the process. He told me, okay, why don't you give some story and then told me where this whole thing lies. I said, oh, thank you. I didn't, didn't even think about that. So he's taking me back the same old path. He's taking me through a very, what I would call familiar path that I've, I have walked for about Two decades, 20 years. December made me 20 years of ordination as a Catholic priest. So for 20 years plus, I walked through this path and it gives me meaning. So let me start with a story. But before I tell you the story, I want to tell you, first of all, today I want to share with you the mandate of the beginning and the beginning of the mandate. So if you may, please write it down. The mandate of the beginning and the beginning of the mandate. What I'm to share with you today will apply to everyone. If you are a minister, it will help you a lot. It will apply to you. If you have a calling in ministry, for those who are watching me online or listening in on the Christ radio, it is the same. The same power, the same presence. And if you have a calling in any area of life, whatever is the area of life that you have calling, whether it's in politics, in profession, in career, business, whatever it is, anything that will have a beginning and will have a lifespan, and we we'll have to and we we'll have to produce results and succeed will benefit from this message so don't sit down and think oh um, I'm just hearing something about somebody it's not me except you don't have the destiny that has to begin you don't have a purpose that has to begin and that has to manifest and bear fruit that's the only one that has exemption from the application of what I'm going to share with you tonight. And to also tell you that as I speak to you, the God of power and might will do mighty things in your life Amen. and powerful things in your life. Amen. So please don't expect that after we will now say, okay, it is time for God to do mighty things and powerful things. If God gives me that as instruction, fine. But just to let you know that as I speak, as I talk to you, as it applies to God's plan in your life, He will do mighty things. He will do what? Mighty things and powerful things. If you agree, can I see your hand? Okay. So let's start with the story that will help you understand the mandate of the beginning and the beginning of mandate it will connect us to a scripture and a message a teaching that will help you for some of you some i hope is all of you it will change your life forever 
it will upgrade your life and set you up set you up in a place that will make you go and go and go and go and keep going okay at the age of 22 just before I turned, I think I had turned 22 I had turned 22 I had a very strange encounter with God I grew up a very very wild person very wild I had a very wild living I knew a lot of things before my age I was ahead of my age in knowing things I have never I had never had any friend I had just about one or two friends of my age then I had senior friends senior friends who were into all sort of things so I ran a run for all sort of terrible people both male and female all of them older than me I remember one day walking with some very senior people who were feared in my community one lady that knew me from my community called me am i poor am i poor that i loved what was big of course i'm my boy you understand so my love was in things big people bigger and that exposed me very early exposed me to wild things and wild experiences and it's not necessary for me to talk about it you all have your own wild experiences so keep your own I am keeping my own so I left my community and I went to Laos to start a new life with my elder sister and I had that encounter and God used her she got me to listen to a message I shared this on radio I've shared this severally for years Listen to one sister, Grace, who confessed to have been operating at the highest level of witchcraft kingdom, then got arrested, and then went about telling people about the works of darkness. So my sister got me to listen to this story because she had done everything on earth to get me to deeper life and to be born again. I was a Catholic, and as a Catholic, I was unrepentant. I didn't know God, but anywhere I went to, I would look for church because that's what my parents showed me. So I didn't understand all these things. I couldn't change my mind. But after listening to that message, like the last thing she will try, after all efforts that have been frustrated, and I had dressed up to go to another part of Lagos to meet a senior friend of mine who was already in the army was in Ikeja cantonment to explore a higher level of wildness in the barracks so I was impatient as she got me to sit down late that morning to listen to this message I was very impatient impatient but I listened anyway out of respect after that she turned to me and said okay because at the end of it she expected I was I will confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. After that, she asked me, so, what do you say? I said, ah, so what did you expect me to say? You asked me to listen to this message. I have listened. I want to go to where I'm going to. And she felt so frustrated. And she's such a praying woman. The first person in the family to have met Christ through the ministry of Reverend Kumuyi, as far back as about 84. Far back as 84 or so. A very praying woman, serious praying woman. And she looked at me in the eyes and told me, remember tomorrow may be too late. I greeted her and left. While on my way in the bus, the cracks began like your wall beginning to crack the cracks beneath you the cracks everywhere the cracks like you begin to hear voices 
like you begin to hear questions pay attention that is the reason why God wants me to tell you this story because if you understand this story maybe you will know a little bit or you will understand a little bit my journey I have a very strange journey I consider it strange if another person had my story I will still consider it very strange and unique so the beginning of all of this is in this story my sister didn't preach to me just told me listen I had listened to Kumoyi preaching all sorts of messages didn't make any sense to me I admire him admire him is the first preacher and for me is the greatest preacher in Nigeria Kumoyi you don't I, I cannot take it away from the greatest preacher it's strange but it didn't make any sense to me I lived in the house where preaching was 24 hours day and night no listening to radio no music no entertainment nothing tips after tips revival after revival very boring but you must listen it didn't touch me made, made no sense to me just that I admired the man and appreciated him for deep 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 insights and I asked my in-law one day where does this man get all these things from he said my in-law by revelation the first time I heard the word revelation in my life but he didn't make any sense to me but this word remember tomorrow may be too late my world cracked and began piece by piece to fall apart So on my way, I was thinking, I never stopped thinking about tomorrow may be too late. Voices were speaking to me. It was like echo, like one being in echo chamber, resonating, coming back to you. Remember, remember tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow. So I went to Ikeja Cantonment, and it was not easy to find my friend. After a very long wait and walking around, we met in the evening. By that time, I was hungry and tired and alone. Left with these strange voices, these strange crackings. So he took me to the house. In his house, he welcomed me with fella, fella song. <laughs> so you can imagine where I walked into. The opposite of where I'm coming from. So fella upon fella. We sat down, we were talking about where to go to for the night and I couldn't hold it back so I asked him my friend I used to call him Caterpillar <laughs> you dare not laugh at my friend <laughs> ask him have you ever thought about God this was in the night have you ever thought about God because as at this time I was in the middle of what I felt was God because I no longer knew anything nothing was Satan nothing made sense I didn't find so I just needed to share it with somebody now you will understand me a little to share it a little say have you ever thought about God I say oh your sister has gotten you to deeper life I say no that's not what I'm talking about I'm just like have you ever thought about God that night we had a very miserable night nothing connected us because nothing he said made sense to me we didn't go to anywhere I think we ate I don't know if we did but I kept asking him so we, it was opposition between two of us we couldn't just connect there was no reason didn't no connection everything that connected us didn't 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 exist again so in the morning as early as possible as he left for work I dressed up and left by this time it was no longer crackings and cracks it was things had fallen no peace and throughout the night I didn't sleep just couldn't sleep sleep was taken away from me I couldn't rest no peace nothing 
and the question kept coming what of if tomorrow may be too late so I couldn't hold it again I was just too tired so while in the bus I just cried I told God I'm tired I'm just tired <laughs> so I went to my church St. Charles Olodi Catholic Parish St. Charles Catholic Church Olodi Olodi Papa. yes St. Charles Catholic Church Olodi Papa in Lagos on the way from for if you are familiar with a Jegule in that area from Boundary to Wilma just there on the road that was my parish so I went there and went to the altar and lay down and cried I told God please take my life nobody taught me nobody instructed me nobody asked me to do it it's just that the load was too heavy for me to carry I just needed rest so I told him take my life and cried and wept and suddenly the peace I never knew existed the joy that never existed the rest the satisfaction just came flooding in I don't know for how long I lay there but for some time crying and happy and sitting in that church for long I walked away a different person I was addicted to fasting and prayer for months and I looked like in a needle my sister was afraid for me my sister kept saying I had religiosity since I had not gone to, cut, uh, to deeper life she thought I was just being religious and she would keep telling me holding on to external form of religion but forgetting the power <laughs> my sister is not sorry she would say me you tell me you bad boy <laughs> you know me now <laughs> I started having strange encounters one of those days deep in the presence of God the presence of God was so mighty in my life I was so addicted that nothing made sense I just couldn't stop praying every time I just couldn't one of those days and I sat there in church alone and told God since you have taken my since you have since you have saved me i told him so you have been so good and you didn't come to me early why didn't i quarreled with god why didn't you come early and you you waited for me to waste all my time and life before you came you should have come early i said now that you have saved me use me to save others it's a prayer after some time that I reached a point in my life I said I wish I never prayed that prayer I said use me to save others so the call began let's not bore you eventually a summary of it you know 1993 go home your people need you you are a missionary to your people then the only thing I could do then was preaching in bus I could not move from one location to another without preaching in bus and if I did, I would not sleep that night. So I, I could not resist preaching in bars. Anywhere I saw people, I talked to them about Christ. Some would cry. Some would be very angry with me. All sorts of reactions. Or reactions. So 1993, I accepted to come. 1994, I came. By this time, 1994, I encountered very strange manifestation of the miraculous power in my life that I didn't know existed I experienced power to cast out demons to command demons stand from a distance and command people with demons who fall from distances just conducting deliverance every time everywhere you come to visit me maybe to tempt me I would descend the demon and it would become deliverance session <laughs> It was just strange. The power and the move for the miraculous came strangely, mightily. 30 years ago, by this time, it started. And he used to bring people from the neighborhood of Edene and part of Econo. 
the rowney duck and all of that for meetings we used to have and i was a seminarian and god hit me because if the authorities knew that will end my call but god kept me god did not escalate it so that's the beginning of all of this so i came on a purpose i was not just a catholic priest i was not i knew it others did not because in life you know when you are in a place you are you are like everybody your unique story may not be respected because everybody looks at you from the point of view of another person but inside of me in the midst of everybody i never forgot me how we started and the two mandates now that you have saved me use me to save others number two you are a missionary to your people i knew it and i knew it was not so eventually as a catholic priest it reached a point that my life was empty for years i was a little doing well in some ways that some people say oh this man some people envied me father julius is younger to me he must have heard about me i've had mighty meetings in Kano that will bring all the Catholic charismatic and Catholic community mighty meetings in Kano. Actually, my partner started, partnership began in Kano. I've had opportunity within Nigeria and outside Nigeria to minister. I was honored. Bishops honored me, recognized me. Some authorities feared me and were threatened by me. And so everything being equal, I should have been okay and just satisfied. But I knew there was emptiness inside. So every day there was a question. Is this all? And I would tell God, don't let me die like this. If I die like this, I will not be happy. I will cry in a secret place and I will not be able to tell anybody because nobody will know. I will cry because there is emptiness I'll tell God, please don't let me die this way. Please, I'll beg him. Say, spare me, don't let me die this way. Let me fulfill whatever it is. So seven years ago, actually from October 2006, I sat down with God in one week meeting. At the end of it, I wrote down my resignation letter because God revealed to me, I made it very clear to me your future in the Catholic Church is over it's time to leave I was afraid for the first time I discovered that fear is a being fear is a spirit fear is not an emotion fear is a person the spirit is very powerful I encountered fear and so I wish I never heard so I just pretended I didn't hear and I didn't see, I didn't hear anything in that retreat. A com should know about that retreat. A com should know about that retreat. December, God told me it's time to face your fears. It is over. And my life collapsed because God had spoken to me. So I took a decision and I moved to face my fear. After facing my fear, my entire world everything i had the people the family resources contact everything that made me me fell apart i was alone afraid i knew it was over so i did the crossover the redeem camp in january first i've told you the, the story over and over after the crossover in the redeem camp i took some sleep early in the morning around 9 a.m i woke up and of course you remember the the revelation i was shown my future as a catholic priest i was shown that it will keep me small i will never fulfill my call it was revealed to me so clearly in that revelation show me my future that i will never it was not like you can try what i saw is that you will never fulfill that call and the other side, I was told, you, remember, you know it now, I was told it was black, nothing was seen, scary, but I heard a voice that are, things are changing at the gate, which means that there will be changes. And they are speaking Japanese, which means a hard language to learn. 
It's like an invitation. Are you ready for the changes? And are you ready to learn the heart language? I woke up and I started a long fast. Went to the desert in Karuna that I referred my brother. I told him, go to that desert. Too. That's where my life where I took the decision be seated. I don't know whether that desert benefited you. He never met him in that desert because I had to send him to that desert. Say, I encountered God in that desert. You go to that desert in Kaduna. I sought God, came back with conviction that I will live with all the fears and uncertainty. I took the decision to face a future that was blank and dark, that I will encounter changes and learn the heart language. Seven years later, I'm standing here, I'm still changing. I've been married. March will make me six years. I'm a father of children. <laughs> I have some guys, some people, beautiful daughter and two guys, very serious members of my life. I'm learning languages, learning from here, the first lady and the incredible, adorable wife, and these incredible angels from heaven, my children, learning language from all of you, having to unlearn everything in the Catholic priesthood I received against the life I now have to live. live. And after unlearning that, then beginning to learn everything. I need to have and know in order to move on with this life and then relearning all the things that I still need to relearn from my past. It's been very hectic for me. It's been very difficult for me, very challenging. But the grace of God has made it so easy for me such that if you see me, things just happen effortlessly and I just go about life like nothing has happened but a lot of work behind the scene a lot of struggles a lot of fallings and risings in this new Japanese alphabet <laughs> so almost seven years or seven years after I started that journey God told me now it is time to fulfill the real mandate so this is what led me to this the real mandate as a result of which I stayed empty, unfulfilled as a Catholic priest with everything and comfort and every assurance and security I had but empty inside and I couldn't tell anybody because nobody would believe except once in a while I would just mention to one or two persons and they would be scared and they would say we are praying for you God told me so when people ask me why did you resign and all of that Maybe from now you will understand. Because all that we have been doing have been to try to learn. It is not as if we have learned everything. We are still writing exams and learning and unlearning and relearning. But God says we have learned enough to start. So by the grace of God, next month we will have one big event outside. And I will announce it in the course of this meeting. Which will be a public moving from church. A public place and that will begin so this meeting is very important having told you this let's talk I've told you the beginning of the mandate and the mandates of the beginning in story now let's go to the scripture before we go to the scripture I will invite you to rise because at this time I will no longer be the one talking to you someone you don't see will start talking to you so let's do something consciously raise your hand say father in the name of jesus christ i am ready to listen to you speak to me in a simple way make what i will hear today not only today but the rest of Goshen 2024 experience make it significant and life-changing 
cause my own life to begin so cause your word to come to me in signs in miracles in wonders in life changing encounters say Holy Ghost I hold on to you by faith the one who brings Jesus to somebody the one he said will bring to us everything he has I hold on to you to bring me everything of Jesus in his salvation as I hear these words speak those words to yourself no you are going to pray that's not how you are going to do it do it like you are desperate say Holy Ghost I'm not going to hear that man there Holy Ghost is not that man I want to hear Holy Ghost is not that man I want to hear Holy Ghost is not that man that I want to hear. The Holy Ghost is not a man I want to hear. Speak to me divinely. Can you hold the hand of just one person? Look at that person and say, In the name of Jesus, if you came here for a purpose, even if you didn't come for a purpose, I agree with you on the purpose of God for you that you will not leave this place until you have received fully from God. Pray, pray, just pray. Say you will not leave this place just as I will not leave this place. Jesus Christ lift up your two hands as I speak God will prove through his word Amen. that he is the God of power and might Amen. as I speak God will fulfill and demonstrate instantly in different cases and diverse ways that he does not save by argument that when he wants to heal you 
he does not ask a doctor to come and meet you that when he wants to deliver you from a prison he does not look for the best lawyer to speak for you God will demonstrate to you that when he wants to lift you that he does not look for powerful stakeholders God will demonstrate to you that when he wants to turn your life around the king who does not like you will not sleep because of him God will demonstrate to you that when he comes to the Red Sea he does not look for scientists and technologists and pray le mosso manda kata i see some of you that have been standing on the other side of your resi kata waiting for scientists to talk rakata malabo shikata labo le makata lima and experts in technology to bring equipment kala kapolia and waiting for technicians and engineers to come to work i speak to you the god of power and might is going ahead and the rest can no longer stop you i thought it was for somebody here yes that's what i see many of you had left egypt but you have been stuck in your rest. Yes, you had left Egypt and you said, Thank God, God has visited me. Only to come to Red Sea and there is no ferry. And the sea does not recognize you. Malakato. Malakato. God does not cross the Red Sea, Calabo. God does not take his people across the Red Sea through the hands of engineers. Kata. He does so by power and might. If God sends me, your Red Sea is letting you go now in the name of Jesus. is about proving God this is what this meeting is about this meeting is about proving God sir this meeting is about proving God this meeting is either God will an, will, be, will answer and affirm that is the God of power and might or he will say we were lying that I was lying this is not a matter of argument. Is either God is the God of power and might, as he says he is, or he's not. Why? How do we know? Yeah, there has to be a proof. Lift up your two hands. Speak with all your heart concerning something. Now, before I start preaching. Because at the end of the ministry, we are supposed to take evidence. Something that you know if it happens in your body in your life now that you will know it has happened because there has to be a proof if God is the God of power and might if he needs to wait for 10 years to do something if he needs UN United Nations to agree in the Security Council in order to deliver a family 
does he need the agreement of surgeons and consultation with the best medical experts for lumps for cancerous lumps to disappear it has to be proven and the day is today spoken in dark places so it's not in dark places that God speaks say Lord I offer myself as a proof I want to be a proof proof through me if you are watching me on the internet it does not make it doesn't make any sense God is there the host of God are there say Lord Prove to me that you are the God of power. Something that will be proven. that must dry up swelling that must disappear a hand that must be stretched out arthritis that must go paralysis that must go deafness that must go blindness that must go dumbness that must go that must be open so Lord I want to be a living proof prove yourself through me Jesus Christ be seated all through this ministry have something in front of you that you want God to prove just in front of you something something and when I say something it is something anything so power and might is not about certain things when it comes to God the power and might of man is about certain things. But the power and might of God is about anything, everything, all things. Sir, God is to be proven. I don't believe a man has a call without a proof. When I resigned from a Catholic priesthood, I did, I told God something. I make myself available to you to prove yourself through me. That was my agreement with God. Say, show me that if a man takes a decision that everybody on earth will be against, and he sets his heart only upon you and steps out and stands only upon you, show me whether you are enough to hold that man. Six years, almost seven years now, so far, he has proven to me. Sir, I know it. I have been proven. You may not know it, but I know. There are few things I know you don't know. I wanted God to prove to me. The reason why since we started on the first day of September in 2017 till now, I have not looked for any mighty name to come and help me bring people and help me and many people offered beginning with the wonderful good-hearted Reverend Joe Olaya that I had to submit to for mentorship 
because I was coming into a new world. Somebody that could talk to me, that could listen to me, Reverend Joel, and such an incredibly good-hearted man. He has, he had to offer me from the beginning before the decision. I will come. We will do all this. We'll do that and do that to make sure you stand. He has come here only for dedicating my children. I took a decision. I will not bring any man. If God does not bear me and make me fulfill the call, I will go and sell Corazon. I was ready. So far, almost seven years, by the grace of God, you know it. Very soon, by the grace of God, we'll start bringing people for one inter uh, interdenominational ministry or the other. But so far, we are told, prove it. We are proving it. We are proving it. Now, we are entering another level of proof. Shout another level of proof. I speak over every one of you here on a purpose and on a, on a mission. After these five days, you shall enter another level of proof. It's not, I'm not speaking randomly. I'm talking about those who have a mission, a purpose, a life to fulfill. You will, by the grace of God, I bring to you that which has helped me according to the measure of Christ over you. You will enter another level of proof. Be seated. That is what I have said. Isaiah chapter 61. Verse 1 to 4. You know I have history with this scripture. And it's the Holy Spirit that took me there. My plan was okay. Let's start talking about the God of power and might. I did all of that and the Holy Spirit told me, you're wasting your time. My head was hurting. He said, go and rest. And then he told me the beginning of the mandate. This may just end up being what we'll deal with, but I don't know. Tomorrow we'll see. Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 4. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, not upon us. Not upon them. Not upon an organization. The Spirit of the Lord God does not come upon an organization. The Spirit of the Lord God does not come upon a nation. The Spirit of the Lord God does not come upon it comes upon a person. It may be persons in an organization. It may be everybody in the organization. But the spirit of the Lord God rests upon what? A person. <laughs> say, I'm a person. Come on. Can you say it again? I am a person. A person. That's it. I just want you to know. Because the lie of religion and church is thinking that God, that if it is not this organization, if it's not this body, it cannot be God. It's a lie of religion. God looks for a person. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. Say, anointed me. That's it again. Anointing is not an organizational thing. It's a personal thing that may be for organization. That means the organization that expresses a particular anointing is because of a person. Oh, I don't know. Am I communicating? In business, the same way. The reason why Apple is Apple and different from Samsung, no matter what, people will put pressure on Apple. Do what Samsung is doing. You say, foldable phone. All of this, do it also. Apple doesn't talk. It is traced to a man called Steve Jobs. 
So they are staying on the lane of what came upon him at a technological level. As a young man, that nobody believed in him. And he built the first Macintosh. That's how it works. So when you see an organization, any organization that forgets the individual and the philosophy, the anointing in spiritual case, or the idea, the vision of the person or the people that created it, that organization will have issues. Except it reinvents itself and becomes a different thing. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. But the Spirit of the Lord God does not just come upon somebody for vanity, for specific reason to anoint. Now, today I want us to talk a little bit about anointing. If you look at on the first day of September in 2017, when the first great awakening began, I preached this text. On the first day of my priesthood in Anua Parish, I've told you that in a mass celebrating in this diocese, as a young priest, few weeks old in the priesthood, the reading of the Catholic Church universally that day reflected this. My teaching practice in the seminary to write homiletics and do, do practice of standing before a class to preach. Father Julius understands this. It was this text that I chose. It was not chosen for me. So I have been in the mystery of this text from the beginning. I have 20 plus years history with this text. It's the manifesto. Is it, there's mystery in it that is mine. The Spirit of the Lord God does not come upon somebody for vanity, for just enjoyment. It comes to anoint. Say anoint. To anoint me. Before, to, from tomorrow we'll talk about, we'll begin to walk the works of anointing. Say the works of anointing. Because every anointing has a purpose. So the remaining part the other three verses, verse 2, verse 4, and all of that, they are talking about the last part of verse 1. Going forward, they are talking about the workings of the anointing. But let's talk about anointing. And then we'll ask God to do mighty things. And then we'll find out proof. I told you, if there is something instantly, just place it in front of God as I'm speaking, I expect at the end of this, it does not have to be till tomorrow. Now. And if you didn't come, if you have no, nothing serious, bring somebody who has something serious to deal with. The word anointing is masha. In Hebrew, masha means to rub, rub oil. It means to paint. So the word anointing in the Bible from the original root in Hebrew means to paint. Masha, paint. The word anointing comes from the word oil. So oil to paint. One thing about oil and painting is this. When you paint this pole with oil, the pole now carries the color of the oil. If you paint my face with oil, you no longer see my original skin tone. What you will see is what? The painting, the oil. If the oil is black, my face will be what? Black. If the oil is red, what will happen to my face? Okay. So pay attention to this. So anointing changes. Anointing adds something different and new. To what is anointed. So the spirit comes to paint. To change the color of a being. So if you are useless, hopeless, rejected and helpless. You yourself, you don't believe in yourself. And the spirit of God comes upon you. 
what the spirit will do is that it will paint you so that those who used to see you and see uselessness when they see you they see a different color according to the color of the of the paint if it is white they now see you white that's what the spirit comes to do say anointing praise God anointing this is the mystery of the spirit so the spirit comes upon somebody pains that person say the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed me painted me smeared me with the oil he has by implication the implication of being painted of being rubbed and smeared with the oil it means the spirit sets you apart if the spirit comes upon any of you here maybe you are seven look at for example david david was the least in the family and david was anointed the brothers did not give him a chance as i'm talking the holy spirit is painting somebody's hand wealth in the spirit is about changing the color of your hand you see there are those that their hands when people do business with them spiritually they look at hands say these hands cannot carry anything so nothing substantial comes to your hand when it is little the color of your hands can accept little it's a mystery of some people staying small the color that they carry spiritually only attracts and keeps small so when the spirit to make wealth comes what it does is what it rubs the oil of largeness upon your hand because oil has different expressions when you talk about oil there is oil for everything oh, come on come on come on is that is that correct the oil for very serious heavy duty engines are not the same oil with tricycle so there are oils and then there are what oils. that's a mystery of anointing there are oils and there are what so there is a hand made for tens there is a hand made for hundreds and when the Holy Spirit wants to transpose you he does not gather multitude to say come and help this man what he does is that he smears your hand paints the color of millions the color of billions in that same hand and somebody used to see you and consider you for broom and for cleaning now sees you and apologizes to you and takes you to the highest place in this season oil after oil is coming upon somebody in the name of Jesus I told you the message will affect everyone now you know you know we are talking about the God of power and might so when God wants to show his power and might he sends you oil by the spirit that carries that has the smell of power and the color of might stretch out your hand say Lord change the color by your spirit paint me with another color the color that changes paint me with the color that elevates Paint 
me with the color that transforms. David was painted with a color because the spirit came upon him and the spirit took time and painted him. The brothers did not still respect him but Goliath respected him. The brothers did not still believe in him but Saul the king honored him. There is an oil that is coming upon somebody changing the face of your life, of your womb in the name of Jesus. Be seated. I just saw that the womb the inner contour inside of somebody's womb has just been painted with a new color. You see, natural color of the womb may give the doctor information to tell you, oh, this womb cannot carry a child. The chances of pregnancy is so slim, but when the spirit comes upon you, there is an oil whose color now makes the womb, that same womb, ready for a child. That oil is coming upon some specific persons here. In the name of Jesus, you will know in three months whether you are the one. In three months. Three months, you will know. You are the one who will know whether it is for you. Because I saw it very clearly that the womb is being painted with oil. So, what happens is that when the Spirit comes upon somebody, somebody, and anoints and paints that person, the first thing that happens is that on account of the color of the paint, which is called anointing, the person is set aside. It's no longer like others. Now, this is what makes ministry different from ministry. One of the greatest mistakes in ministry these days, and I expect a minister to listen to me, is people sitting down, admiring and loving the anointing of a man. And then going to associate with the man to say, oh, let the same mantle that is upon you come upon me. <laughs> it is spiritual foolishness. It is lack of depth in God. It is lack of depth. If God called you, if God called you as a minister, there is a specific, unique expression of the oil a color of it that will set you apart as a mark it may make you have some kind of lineage and connection with certain people but it does not make you like any other person <laughs> this is the understanding we have been given in the spirit so I've been very careful these seven years. By the grace of God, God has given me revelation about some ministries and ministers. And in some cases, the Holy Spirit will say, empty your account and celebrate what I have done in that person's life. And I will do it. But I've been very careful to tell God, I don't want the mantle of that man. I've been very consistent and careful. Internationally at this moment, God has just connected me to an ancient prophet that for the first time I listened to him, it looks like I've been listening to him for years. Because even Manarism, the way he talks, his vision and everything and expression and understanding, the first person 
in many years ago, so my man who preached decades ago, you know, I love to go to Greek word, to Hebrew word. That decades ago, 50 years ago, a man who will dig deep into Greek and speak from the, I say, ah. And the Holy Spirit has just brought me into that place as I'm talking to you. But I've been very careful to tell God, I don't want, I don't crave the mantle of this person because of the knowledge that when the Spirit comes upon you, He paints you. And this painting is not according to your desire. This painting is according to the plan of the one who sends the Spirit upon you. I wish few ministers, I have a message for ministers. I'm not yet ready for them. When it's time, I will talk to ministers. Because there is so much deceit and superficiality in ministry of our generation. But just take what belongs to you. So anointing the painting sets one apart. As soon as the Spirit came upon David, when Samuel poured oil upon him, from that moment, David was still the least in the house of Jesse, but he was no longer among the rest. He was set apart. So anointing sets you apart for God, for a purpose. And such that if you don't fulfill that purpose, you did not come, you did not leave. Because it sets you apart. David was bound to kill Goliath because the anointing set him apart and made him ready to kill a Goliath. So if he did not kill Goliath, it would have been, it would have been that he did not fulfill the call. That's why when the brothers saw him, they said, you arrogant boy, what do you look for here? You are not qualified to be here. But Saul the highest authority recognized him because he had been set apart. Anointing sets you apart. Anointing for business makes you different from other business people. Anointing in every area of life, in every area of life, what sets you apart? Your uniqueness, your, your expression that will honor you. And when you stand, Nobody will say, oh, it's like the rest. What sets you apart is the anointing. The greatest pressure is that you be like others. Because people will say, why is he so arrogant? Why is she so arrogant? Why do, why do you think you are better or you are different? It's not being better. It's being true to the painting color. So the day you conform to be like others, that day you lose it. You can no longer operate in it. <laughs> there are things you have been taught by the Spirit. And by the grace of God, as we mature, it will become clearer. But by the grace of God, your painting, your unique color will find expression. I am prophesying to a person here that in the next seven months you will be set apart in the midst of many in the name of Jesus you shall still be doing what you do just that the report will make you different that is what anointing does anointing comes upon you you do the normal things but you have a different result that's it. You do what you, you do. You see, people struggle. Struggle is because you are struggling to do what you don't have the color to do. So the point is you ask yourself, what is the color? What? This is for believers in the first place. It means you know what it means for the spirit to come upon you. He will anoint you. By the grace of God, between now and Friday, for those who have not yet had experience of the Spirit coming upon them, don't worry. There is a promise. Say promise. promise. By the God of power and might, between now and Friday, just follow. Just follow like everything in it is in it. Because what God wants to do at the end of it is not just giving you miracle. He's turning you into a miracle. That's what 
anointing does. It changes you. It was by the color of the, uh, the spirit that people will hear me and say, you don't sound like a Catholic priest. Have you heard it before? Sir, I didn't know. I had never made effort. Be seated. God knows in heaven is my witness. I never made any effort to speak differently, to preach differently. God knows the truth. I've told you how it started. The Spirit came upon me so early and a color was put upon me that gave me unique expression. And I was in a place that you are about to be in a particular way. And I, I did all I could, but I could not. The color sets you apart. The anointing separates you. So the pressure I had for more than one decade is to speak the same language. Because every day so people are telling you, you are not like a Catholic priest. You are not keeping the tradition. You are not. So you feel I lived the life of guilt every day. I mean every day because your brother priest are not comfortable with you. Bishop, not comfortable with you. Even lay people nights. Some nights will give speech openly referring without mentioning my name referring during ordination of young people don't be like some of you who are doing this this who are not acting like catholic priests and you sit down you know and hey, now nah, it's you and you just you don't know how to try because when you carry a microphone you are not you cannot be from this moment every cage that keeps you small like others that cage is broken in the name of Jesus. Every small house that keeps you like others, that house crumbles now in the name of Jesus. Every aquarium, every aquarium that makes you as a small fish comfortable, I break it now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands. There is a promise. God will turn your life inside out in five days. I speak by the God of power and might. I challenge his power and might over your life that the small comfortable place can no longer accommodate you in the name of Jesus you will find expression uh, I said now I say again you will find expression you will be heard you will be seen and you will be known this season, the Spirit will come upon you. And the oil corresponding to God's purpose in your life will paint you in a unique way that will make you stand out in the name of Jesus. Be seated. Sir, this, when God told me late this afternoon, just about one hour before I came out to go to this place that has been my mandate statement. This is my, my life as scripture. I didn't know why, but it's beginning to come clear. Because I told you I'm launching out again. For me, this means something different. Me standing here today. Because there is an understanding that after 30 years, I venture out beyond my comfort zone I'm ready as God makes me ready to fulfill the mandate perfectly I've been shown places outside the, this, this continent but Jesus Christ had to start from Galilee went to, went to Nazareth God has told me you trace your step through Galilee to Nazareth and Jesus Christ from there he did not end there he ended in Jerusalem. And then he told those who follow him, he said, from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, 
the ends of the earth. So there is the end of the earth concerning any man who follows Jesus. It depends on whether you are able to follow till the end of the earth. <laughs> so we have few understanding that help us. You know, the scripture says your beginning may be small. But who despises the days? You don't do that. So I value my little beginning. Your time has come. This is an announcement. Rise to your feet. I announce to you. This is an announcement to your destiny. Your time has come. This is an announcement to a womb. This is an announcement to your feet. This is an announcement to your mind, to your vision. This is an announcement to your household. This is an announcement to your business, to your life. This is an announcement. Your time has come. Praise joy is coming upon you to move forward. And God is equipping you by His Spirit and a unique color that will cause doors to be opened before you. In Jesus' name. Be seated. About three, four things that are anointing doors. When God paints a man by the Holy Ghost into a particular color, the man is set aside unto God, set apart unto God's use. So the man may be in an organization, but is set apart for God's use in that organization. So anointing is not for man, anointing is for God. Because it's the spirit that anoints. So the Spirit anoints you, paints you, and sets you apart for Himself, for His use. So once you are anointed, your primary assignment is not a man. You lose anointing when your concern is about man. What man can do for you? What man has for you? Whose man is for you? Whose man is against you? anointing sets you apart to be focused on God, to be addicted to God. In business, when God anoints you and sets you apart, you are not supposed to play business like everyone. In politics, the same thing. You do everything of politics, but you know your eyes is beyond or are beyond all of this because you are set apart by God for a purpose. And the day you lose God and begin to pay attention to the importance of man, you lose the color. So a man who is anointed can be rejected. Yes. A man who is anointed can be rejected. The moment you turn attention from the one who sets you apart and the use, because this anointing will be for his, a color makes you ready for a thing. And when you deviate from that thing, and deviate from the one who gave you that unique color, from that moment, you lose it. That's why you see some people, they begin very mightily great, spiritually. After some time, they divert into business. Divert into different social things. And they are no longer popular by the color of God. They make themselves relevant in human ways. It means they lost something. Some people begin very mightily in the Holy Ghost. After some time, they become political. Become political means they now mix with men and just do that. The first sign is that the color had expired. They are taking attention from God. <laughs> the second thing that anointing does this applies to every area. If God is the one anointing you for business, there are people who are anointed for business. There are people who are anointed for offices, for different... Uh, anointing is... It has color depending on what God wants to do. You can be young and God comes, put his spirit upon you, puts color upon you that is a political color. It means if you follow God carefully, you will arrive in political leadership and control. And what happens is that the pressure of Satan is to make sure you lose the anointing, then you join cult, then you know, then you end sad, and heaven regrets over you. And there are many people like that. 
they started they knew the origin was that there was prophecy there was a word that word that prophecy did not give you the color it was written for you before the foundations of the earth and that prophecy is coming to announce to you it's time so prophecies don't make prophecies reveal i don't know what i'm talking to so prophecy does not make a man a priest prophecy reveals a man is a priest prophecy does not make a man does not make a man wealthy prophecy reveals that a man was made wealthy that's why for everyone that has come into a place by prophecy he has to follow direction from God to maintain it and many people start that way and they get to a point lose the color and then they have to look for help from Satan that's how people start from church after some time you no longer see them in church they need an offering to even come to church and when they come to church they come like an official that needs to be honored and celebrated watch out for them they will be a disgrace these are these are orders as i'm talking in this assembly in this meeting god has given me grace in different ways i don't need to talk about them but expect some of you sitting down here who don't take yourself seriously the color will reveal what, what was written down for you before you were born. Can I tell you something? God told Jeremiah, before you were formed, I knew you. Everyone sitting down here, before you were formed, there is something written about you for which you were born. What a moment like this does for you is that the Spirit comes upon you to paint you with the color. Some people had been born and they died. They never answered their name. Why? They never had an opportunity for the interpretation of their scroll so in a meeting like this above all the anointing comes upon somebody and the oil for which you were born comes upon you and the expression begins it now becomes the opportunity to start walking with God because without that you cannot get there can you rise let me speak now purpose is beginning to come alive lift up your two hands Lift up your two and don't be distracted and looking back to find out who is there and who is not there. Just focus. You are enough. Lift up your two and say, I am, I am enough. You are here for a purpose. Let's finish with you today. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's it. Lift up your two hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, that for which I was born, that I have not yet fulfilled, that has been waiting for the color of your spirit let your spirit come upon me during this meeting and let the color for that purpose be revealed say father in the name of Jesus that for which I was born what has been written down for me let your spirit come upon me and let the oil be released upon me. Pray that prayer for one minute. Jesus Christ. Be seated. Number two thing that the anointing does, it makes available all that is required. Anointing equips. Say equipment. That's what anointing. Once the spirit comes upon you and then puts the color 
of God's purpose for you smears you with a particular color oils you in a unique way from that moment everything you need every equipment is in that anointing you don't need anointing and something for your purpose you don't need anointing and then something everything is in that anointing from the moment the color comes upon you inclinations to learn in specific ways ability people of your core people of your business or politics whatever it is your people are contained in the anointing with the color they are attracted When they see you, they recognize you. And when you see them, you know them. I don't know. Are you getting it? I say you don't need anointing and something. You need anointing and anointing alone. Every something is in the anointing. Whoever is to bring you what you need for the fulfillment of that anointing is already positioned. The person will see the color and meet you. That means you walk into a place that everybody had been said no. You walk into the place say we have been waiting for you. Things become easy for you in that area. And you can't explain it. It means you don't struggle in that area. Lack of anointing in that area is revealed in struggle. So when I see ministers come to me and say, I struggle, I struggle, I struggle, I struggle me. I don't want to talk much because I'm still a boy. I don't know much. I just feel like telling the person, are you sure you are called? Because I've been called and I know it. I know because I am called, the people I need, every time, everywhere I go, I meet them. In every season. They identify me and I identify them. It was in the night. Yesterday, while speaking with the first lady, the first lady said the conversation she had with the noble said the first day she came and met me in the office, I looked at her and I told her, let's do ministry together. I was a Catholic priest and she was a core winner. Core winner for 20 something years, if not up to 30 years. Is that correct? I don't remember. When she said it, I don't remember, but I know the Holy Spirit told me call that woman and you came and sat down in the office in the pastoral center I don't know what I told you so the first lady said I looked at you and said let's do ministry together <laughs> from the first day I met her I talked ministry and it's very rare let's do ministry together and strange years later I think we are doing ministry together <laughs> I think we are doing ministry together be seated yeah, one of the few people that I know intentionally. <laughs> one of the few people I know intentionally. We are doing ministry together. A core winner person to the core, unrepentant, came into a place as a Catholic priest and told our friend, We have found it. They have found, and they stayed. So it, they used to sit in a corner. In those days, Mama Stella, they would just, they don't know them. And they would just take them to one corner where there was no fan and they will endure that's why when you see in church some people come and sit down they don't like the place they have not seen your color leave them they just come and look at you and despise you and walk away this place is not it don't worry about them they have not seen the color she came from the first day saw the color and told her friend we have found it and sat down in a corner tight corner where she was, she was an elder, one big person like that, but came and sat down in a tight corner. It was because she recognized the color. And I didn't need to struggle to connect her. At every season, in every season, you will see the resources you need. The problem is that if you are struggling, ask the Spirit to anoint you. Or you are the one calling yourself. 
You are the one forcing yourself to do that particular thing. To do that as a child of God, you are the one forcing yourself to do that. A lot of people do business because others are doing it. It is flying now. After COVID-19, food is very, very, it's flying. So let's do food. And you do food and everything goes bad. So you need to begin to ask God, what is the color of my business call? When you walk in it, can I tell you something? It will come easy from today. In the name of Jesus, it will be said the day your eyes were opened in the uniqueness of the color of the spirit over your life in the name of Jesus and struggle in your place of destiny is over say over I say struggle in the place of your destiny is over say over I say again struggle in the place of your destiny is over be seated Sir, as a proof that God called me, I was trained not to marry as a Catholic priest. By the grace of God, the Spirit coming upon me, permitting me to marry, has smeared me. He tells me I'm privileged to marry you. And I know she's not, li she's not lying. In the midst of all my fasting and prayer, I'm ministering here. And I'm looking at her sitting there and tired or whatever. You will not know while I'm still preaching, I'm talking to her. Hello, love, are you okay? And you don't know. I'm preaching and you are saying amen. But I'm talking to her. Hello, love, are you okay? And she sat down and I said, I'm okay. Yes, I continue. I said, shout, uh, shout a living amen and you shout. You don't know. I, I, <laughs> you, you don't understand. Her. Yeah. Absolutely. No matter how much I preach, I feel how, how she feels there. I pay attention to the children and all of all of that. So once in a while, the children run, run, run. I am still preaching and under anointing. And I have contact, I have contact with my son and he smiles and I smile. And he goes back. There is an assurance in this preaching that he has not forgotten me. So it's, it's help. It's not natural. It's not something you are born with. Is something that the Spirit came upon a man who was trained for almost 10 years against marriage, who lived that life for almost 13 years or for more than 13 years. And then, five years plus going further, so we are learning Japanese. How we are learning. And by the grace of God, we are bent on knowing from A to Z of Japanese. Can I speak over you? every area of God's life for you that right now you are laboring to fulfill your toil is taken away by the anointing in the name of Jesus I speak over you in what God has set you to do who God has set you to be with in what God has set you to fulfill by the spirit that comes to give oil and cause unique expression in is receive help in the name of Jesus be seated be seated be seated be seated did I tell you, number three, anointing makes one who is anointed into the anointed one. Anointing equips you with everything you need. The intelligence you need. If you are anointed for business and you have business sense, you will be smart. You will have business acumen. You cannot be dumb in it. If you are anointed in any profession, you will stand out your mates will look up to you. That's equipment. You will be equipped to look onto the spirit to sit upon you. There is something you were born for. 
Number three, anointing makes you into the anointed. The word Messiah comes from Meshach. Meshach means to rub with oil. Messiah, which we call Messiah in English, which in, in Greek is Christos and English is Christ. The word Meshach, Messiah from the anointing. Messiah, the anointed. In the New Testament, the Christ. Christos in Greek, Christ in English. Christ means the anointed. Once you are anointed, means painted in a particular way. That painting constitutes you into the, the painted one, the anointed one. That means in the area of your anointing, you are an authority. You carry weight. That's what it means to be anointed. To be anointed in a particular way means you walk into a situation. There is weight. Carry weight. You are an authority. You stand upon a ground. There is a mark. You live among a people you are recognized. People may not honor you, but they cannot ignore you. Because you are the anointed, it means you are the one who carries the oil. When you walk into a situation, things change. And if people are angry with you, you walk away, things also change. Why? You are the anointed. That's why I say, anointing is not organizational. It's an individual. We see what happens in redeem the next generation. The whole of redeem is reduced to one anointed man. Globally and locally. So the greatness of the foundation of redeem will be seen after the anointed one is gone. So redeem does not carry anointing. A man carries anointing that makes redeem meaningful. So if another man, the failure, let me prophesy so that those who hear me can begin to think and pray. The greatest danger facing redeem and winners is that people can begin to trust in the organizational structure and the mandate book and all of those things. And people don't seek the spirit for the oil to rest. And so when the anointed is taken away, the structure will fall. The structure will become like, it will become like every other place. It now becomes in those days, in those days when Papa was alive. That's what has happened to many organizations. I don't know where I'm communicating. So I'm a prophet. One of the things in this all is that it makes us speak. And we don't care about being misunderstood. What I'm saying, write it down. It's a challenge, it's a temptation. Too many people in Redeem, they are very comfortable. The same thing in winners. Because there is the anointed in their midst. And everything is just going. And so a lot of people who are there may just be comfortable and boastful of the organizational prowess. Sir, and the, uh, Redeem is not anointed. Winners is not anointed. A man is the anointed. Once he's out of the picture, except somebody else carries the spirit and the anointing, the structure over time becomes an old thing. It becomes a traditional thing that has no life to, to offer. I'm sharing with you mystery. We are saying this so that those who hear and in those places can pray can pray. You cannot boast of an organization. Look for the spirit that keeps the organization. An individual is the anointed. If he's out of it, it is not it. After some time, it corrodes the spirit. And that's the failure, the issue of religion, that after some time, we trust in the temple and not the God of the temple. We trust in our organization, how we do things, our tradition. The same thing with the palace. These mighty men that God raised in this generation, the challenge they face right now is who carries the spirit after them. 
Because it's not the will of man, no. it's the will of God. Who carries the Spirit? I pray in the name of Jesus that what God puts in you will not expire. I'm just, I'm, I'm about being done. Tomorrow, tomorrow we will do something very fundamental. Be seated. So anointing makes one the anointed. Say anointed. The anointed makes a difference. Once you are anointed, where others fail, you succeed. By the grace of God, I've carried this all from the beginning. I have history in the Catholic Church. I've never gone to a place and had the same history and story like others. I challenge anybody who has ever known me to contradict. Go on internet and make a video push and say I'm lying. I have never moved into a place and that place is the same. It has never happened. Here in Uyo and in Abuja, where I had a short call, I had a, sp a brief expression of the call in Abuja. And sir, we attracted the attention of the Inspector General of Police. AIG had to come to stop us from building. All powers in the Catholic Church of Abuja, they knew I was in town. They saw me, I was too innocent and too little to, to do the trouble I was doing. So they didn't know me. My name was so mighty as a troublemaker, but they saw me, they will not know. Sometimes when they see me, they say, is this the person? I caused trouble. People said, I took people from their parishes and they swore we, would sue, we shut the place down. The foundation we laid could not be shut down. Till today, he's speaking. In Metema. Till today, in less than two years that I entered Abuja, the entire structure of the Catholic Church in Abuja felt my impact. And they wrote to my bishop, withdraw your boy. He's causing trouble here. No. Every day they were calling my bishop. Now the Archbishop of Calabar. There is a boy that we had that came from you. He's troubling us. We draw him. And the Archbishop will come to Abuja, have a meeting with me and ask me questions. And I was so innocent. So innocent. Once he told me, in two weeks time, you'll come back. I say, I had a problem in on my knees. Why? The Holy Ghost just lifted me up in my sitting room and I fell. And I had a problem on my knee. And that's what saved me. I say, oh, my doctor is still treating me. Let me finish treating. That's what spared me. Because they have told him, remove him. So the Holy Ghost made me for so sometimes when things happen to you, you don't understand. <laughs> yes, sincerely. Sincerely. I'm just letting you know what it means to be the anointed. I had a problem on my knees. And a doctor was treating me for free. You see, he was a former Catholic. And he, he, he just, you know, we used to talk. So I told my bishop, please just give me two weeks. Let me finish treating. He said, when you finish, call me. I called him in two weeks. He didn't tell me to come back. He said, call me again. He didn't tell me to come Call me again. He didn't tell me to call me again. 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 After some time, I don't call him again. I continued until I finished what God wanted me to do. In one year and about a few months, we caused trouble. The, the entire archdiocese felt and they discussed me in a meeting every day. And the priest in New York is a telling bishop withdrawing because they saw me on television. My picture is no longer from the village, it's from a city with beautiful people sitting. He said, Bring him back. Now, when you are the anointed, sir, you move into a, a place that others enter. And since I left till today, nobody troubles that place. That place is in peace. Everybody who goes there quietly does, just does what should be done. No trouble. After I left, even people within the circle of those I went, he said, since you came, you have brought us trouble. They themselves were no longer on my side. Some priests, they say, please send this man away. Since he came, he has increased our trouble. Being the anointed makes you the, a difference maker. So you don't love it to make impact. You need color. You need the anointed. You need the Holy Ghost to give you a color that sets you apart in such a unique way you step into rubble and you build a mansion out of it. By the grace of God, I have a proof for what I'm talking about. I have a proof for what I'm talking about. Sir, I have it. The oil and the color that has been upon us has helped us to stand in the middle, in this same city 
amidst people saying I will die, uh, amidst people saying everything on earth, sir, you see me, you see me every day, and you know I don't look like somebody who will die. <laughs> I'm giving people life by the grace of God. God is using me to raise families, to raise destinies. We have seen incredible miracles in this place. We have seen families. We have seen destinies. We have seen all sorts of things. So a man who is going to die tomorrow does not become the meaning of life for others. That's how it works. It is not by chance the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he has rubbed me with oil. He has painted me. Because he has painted me, I become the, the painted. So the word Christ means the painted. The anointed. The colored. The one colored by the Spirit. Who because he's colored by the Spirit. According to Acts chapter 10. He goes about, he went about doing good. Steps into funeral and it becomes thanksgiving. Steps into the big Bethany and Lazarus at a farewell party with death. And death told Lazarus, sorry we will see you again, but not soon. Bye bye. Because the anointed stepped in. When the spirit comes upon you and you are colored, the people used to beg, they beg you. When the spirit comes upon you and you are colored, where you were rejected, you become the chief cornerstone. For the stones that the builders rejected now become the chief corner. Rise to your feet. Tomorrow, we will deal with new beginnings. So come tomorrow in a unique preparation to start a new journey. Because oil will come upon you that in a place you say it is over and journey will start. Rise to your faith. We are going to do what will be our daily ritual and practice during these five days the anointed is a person and is Jesus Christ he is the one who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and when the Spirit comes upon you he then paints you fasting and prayer does not give you anointing it is a man the man of Galilee who paid the price is the one who comes into your life and as a, a believer who are taking it for granted, rededicating yourself to him and then he will put the spirit upon your head and the spirit will paint you. And when the spirit paints you, you will walk into the places of darkness and light will shine. I want all eyes to be closed. If you are in this place and you have not yet submitted your will and your heart, your decision, your volition to the Savior, Jesus Christ, so that he will forgive you and give you a new life. Your journey will begin when you take that decision and you have been given this moment to do. And if you have been a child of God saved, you've gone back to sin, gone back to your, the normal ways of the world and you lost the plan of God for you, God sent me your way. That same encounter that I had 33 years ago, when a woman told me, remember tomorrow may be too late. I bring that encounter. God does not save by negotiation. God does not forgive by asking your father, your mother to forgive you. He forgives by power and might. God does not save you by calling witches and wizards. 
calling the marine in a conference and begging them to let you go. God saves by power and might. You have only three minutes in this place. After you take that decision, I'm going to pray for you. And there will be proof in your life that will stand to all generations. Salvation does not come by you saying a word. Salvation comes by you surrendering your will to the one who saves. Adam and Eve rebelled against God and lost glory because they used their will against God. When you return your will to God, God takes you and he gives you the precious gift of a new life. So I want you to exercise your will right now. And as a child of God, to now surrender your will and renew your own dedication and consecration and tell him, paint me, paint me. So if you are in this place and you have never taken that decision or taken it seriously, you just said something in the past, but you didn't mean it. Just turn your will to God. Speak personally, intentionally, knowing that this is the moment of destiny, that there may not be tomorrow, because tomorrow may be too late. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't hear you. Everyone in this place, say, Lord Jesus Christ. By their will, Adam and Eve turned against God. Say, by their will, Adam and Eve turned against God. By my will, I turn to you my salvation. I turn my will to you. I cannot save myself. I have heard of you as the Savior. I turn my will to accept your salvation. I turn my will from sin. I turn my will from Satan. I turn my will from death. I turn my will to you. Come into my life. Forgive me my sins. I repent of all my sins. Take away all my sins. Give me the gift of new life. Fill me with your spirit. Cause me by your power and might to follow you and walk in your ways. In Jesus' name. Lift up your two hands. All eyes closed. Father, we don't have time. These families have to go. These people have to go. They will pray tonight and come back tomorrow. But I ask you to prove to them by instant miracles. Some happening instantly now, some overnight. But let it start now. That as they shout Jesus seven times, there will be miraculous healing deliverance, freedom, all sorts of encounters that will be called miracle. That the deaf ear will hear, the blind eyes will see, the dumb tongue will speak, minds will be restored. And in every area, people need your power and might. Instantly, they will have it. Cancer will be healed. Lives, heart diseases will completely go. Weak limbs will be restored. Pains in any area will disappear. As we call the name of Jesus, whom you have put all of your salvation into, as we call several times, all of this will happen. And the devil will lose all his captives here and forever. In Jesus' name. You're going to shout.
As I mentioned, Jesus up to one, two, by, by the time you get to seven, you will keep shouting Jesus and keep shouting Jesus and just keep shouting and mentioning what you want him to do for you. One, shout Jesus. The grave was opened when Jesus spoke. He said, take the stone away. And they took it away. And he spoke. And the dead man came out. Do shout Jesus. For there is no other name given unto me by which we may be healed, delivered, and free. Three, shout Jesus! It is written for in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that is Lord to the glory of God. For shall Jesus. Nature submits to him. Death could not hold him captive. For it was impossible. The grave could not stand. Five shall Jesus. Chains don't stand at me. Breast cancer, cervical cancer, eye issue, glaucoma, blind eyes all respond to you. Brain injury, spinal cord injuries. Six, shout Jesus! The paralyzed. The limb, the marine possessed, witchcraft tormented, or called bound. They all bow in the name of Jesus. Seven shout Jesus! Keep shouting 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 Jesus! Keep shouting, keep shouting. Do not stop, 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 do not stop. Do not stop, do not stop. Yokes are broken. Yokes are broken. Yokes are broken. Prison doors are open. Come out. Come out into life. Come out into freedom. I see. Yes, yeah. Don't speak. Restore. Wheelchair is gone. Clutch is gone. Grace is gone. Drugs gone. Addictions gone. Sin gone. Pains gone.
what you could not do. Start now. If you could not walk, stand up and walk. Use the part of the body you could not. Power has come upon you. Do what you could not do. Stretch yourself. Things have been reordered. Do what you could not do. Shake the parts of your body you could not shake. Exercise yourself. Exercise yourself. Keep speaking those words. If you were building, go back and finish building. Whatever you have started and could not finish, go back and finish it. Go back and finish it. This is an instruction. Go back and finish it. Let's worship him for two minutes. Bless the name of the Lord. Go ahead and bless the name of the Lord.